Good morning everyone. Today we will start the third unit, flow irrigation and lift irrigation. Flow irrigation and its sources. What is flow irrigation? Gravity or flow irrigation, as you can see in the picture below, it is a type of irrigation in which water is available at a higher level as to enable supply to the land by gravity flow. In flow irrigation, water is supplied to the fields through the canals off, taking from headworks. Sources of flow irrigation. All gravity systems consist basically of a source of water, a distribution and conveyance network, and a land surface arranged so as to direct the flow of water. Distribution systems may consist of pipelines or open ditches. The pipelines usually operating at low pressure. The systems of flow irrigation, classification of irrigation canals, a canal aligned along the boundaries of cultiv cultivatable areas in order to supply water for the purpose of agriculture is said to be an irrigation canal. Irrigation canals supply irrigation water to fields and water supply channels, supply water to cities for drinking purpose. An elaborate network of Irrigation canals consist of following categories of canals. Number one, main canal. Number two, branch canal. Number three, distributary. Number four, minor. Number five, water source. What is main canal? This canal, as you can see here, takes off directly from a river or reservoir. It is generally very big. Being too big, direct irrigation is generally not done from it except in exceptional circumstances. Branch canals. Irrigation area for big canals is generally very large. It may not be possible to supply irrigation water from one canal. In such circumstances, the main canal is bifurcated into two or more parts which are known as branch canal as shown below. Each branch canal is assigned to the task of irrigating specified area. Distributaries. Distributaries are channels carrying small discharges of say half to seven cubics. They usually take off from branch, but they can also be taken from main canal, but their discharge has to be smaller than branch canal, otherwise they will become branches. Miners. They are also sometimes called minor distributaries. They take off either from branch or distributaries. Mostly they take off from distributaries. Mostly area lying along the branches is quite high and cannot be irrigated by distributaries. In that case, a small miner is also taken off from the headworks of some distributary and this miner is run along the branch canal. Water course. They are small channels that ultimately carry water to the fields from outlets. Water courses are also sometimes known as gools. They may be pakka or lined. Nowadays, stress is being given for lining of canals and water courses as a lot of precious irrigation water is otherwise lost in percolation. Alignment of irrigation canals. Depending upon the nature of the country, various types of alignments are possible which are mentioned below. Alignment of contour channels, alignment of ridge or watershed channels, alignment of side slope channels. In the first method, the canal is aligned along a falling contour, hence it is named contour channel. The flow of water is generally perpendicular to the slope of the ground. In this type of alignment, drainages are not avoided. It follows the contour, but at the same time, it is taken in such a way that maximum distance is placed between the river and the canal as shown in figure 8.4. The advantage of second method of aligning the canal is that cross drainage works are avoided and the area on both sides of the ridge is under 120 command.
In the third method, canal is aligned at right angles to the contours. Naturally, canal runs parallel to the drains or river, and hence cross drainage works are avoided to the maximum extent. The figure 8.5 shows this type of alignment. Canals, network of permanent and temporary conduits that supply water to irrigated lands from an irrigation source, a key element of an irrigation system. A network consists of conduit and regulation networks and is equipped with devices and structures to measure the water, to raise its level in the canals and regulate discharge, to interconnect canals and to retain sediment. In some cases, the supply network does not have a full complement canals. The irrigation canals are arranged in such a way as to minimize construction and operation cost while providing for the supply of water in the required quantities and at the required times as well as maximum canal efficiency. An essential condition for the operation of an irrigation network is that the main canal have a water level higher than that of canals of lower ranks and that higher ranking canals be higher than lower ranking canals so that the water flows by gravity. The roots of irrigation canals should pass along the boundaries of farms, crop rotation sectors and fields so that the irrigated area is not dissected and the main canal must pass along the highest points of the irrigated area. Inundation canal. Inundation canals are made under the following circumstances. If river water level during floods remain high for a considerable length of time, if sufficient flood water reaches the river in March or April, the flood water may be used to submerge the land so that Kharif crop could be sown. If flood water remains available, say, up to late September, the curry crops can be irrigated up to this time, and even areas may be submerged to sow early rabbi crops in October. Areas to be irrigated when in the vicinity of the river banks, the inundation canals may serve the purpose of irrigation, when soil has good stabilizing power so that bed and banks on the canal remain stable. Inundation canals are more or less similar to the permanent canals. The major difference is that, in the case of permanent canals, permanent masonry or concrete works like wires, barrage, head regulator, fall, cross regulator, are constructed to regulate the supplies. But in case of inundation canals, all these works are not there. Characteristics of inundation canals. Inundation canals are mostly used in deltic and alluvial regions of the river as river course here is generally at a higher level and course is maintained between dikes or embankments. The section of the canal is not regular, the banks are not very strong and may breach if not properly looked after. These canals have longitudinal slope varying from 25 cm to as much as 1 m per km length. The bed level of these canals should be kept at the most of the level of minimum water level in the river. Lower the bed level of the canal, more will be the time for which water will remain available. The head reach of the canal may extend to severe kilometers. At the end of the head reach, a flood regulator is constructed. An escape should be provided near a regulator so that if more water gets entered into the canal, it may be taken out and re-discharged into the river downstream. Here I have cited some of the advantages and disadvantages of inundation canals. The advantages are, it is cheap and so need no head work and other works have to be constructed. Number two, water being rich in silt has good manorial qualities. Number three, the area is less liable to be waterlogged. And the disadvantages are, as there is no headwork structure, the head of the canal is liable to be washed away during floods. Duty of water is very low. Thirdly, since availability of water is dependent upon the floods, the scarcity of water is always felt. Irrigation water may be badly required and the flood water in the river may not be available. 
Fourthly, due to lack of assured supply, the farmers take little interest in their works. Fifth, canals will have to be frequently cleared from sleet. The bigger size of the canal is generally adopted. This is done to get as much of flood water as possible within limited time. And seventh, the alignment of the canal is not very precise. It may be silting at some section and scoring at other section. That was all for today. Thank you.